Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about maxima and minima of multivariate functions. So the idea here is we have z is equal to f of x comma y, okay, and this forms a surface. And what I mean by that is it's really a surface in 3D. So maybe that's a better way to say it. Um, and we, we may want, we, we ask, uh, does, does F, F surface have, um, have, uh, points A and B, let's say where, where F of A and B is larger or smaller than, than points around it. Okay, so by points around it, we can actually define this specifically. We can actually say there's a, some, some disk with, with uh, A, B is the center in which f of a b so we'll call this disk we'll call this disk d in which a b f a b is actually greater than or equal to um actually let's say greater than strictly greater than f of x comma y for all x comma y in d all right and now we'll call that a local Maxima. Likewise, or also, if f of a comma b is less than f of x x comma y, uh, then then we call it a local it's a local minima. All right. So the idea here is as follows. If I have some surface, okay, we have our three dimensional coordinates and we have some surface like this. And we can see that there might be some spots on this surface like that. At some point, there's some point A comma B but if I were to draw a little disc around the surface like that, so this D, if I, if, I, if I project it down there, that's my D, that the point AB in the XY plane here, that's what we call a local maxima. Okay, so what is true about these local maxima? So how, in 1D, in one dimension, uh, so just x all by itself, of course optimization, or, or maxima, involves f prime of x being zero, right? So similar, similar in two de independent dimensions, so x comma y, uh, if f a b is a extremal point so what i mean by extremable is either min or max if it's an extremal point then grad f is equal to the zero vector so what that means of course is f x of a comma b is equal to f y at a comma b is equal to zero. So this right here, we can actually call this, this is actually a theorem. So that's a theorem we can use, right? So all we have to do now 
the idea here, of course, is that if you have uh, if you have derivatives f y and f x, so you basically have a tangent plane here. The tangent plane is flat. Tangent plane is flat in two dimensions, and if that's so, then we know that we're probably at an extremal point. Okay, it should be noted that uh, zero derivative doesn't necessarily mean we're at an extremal point. Do you see how if it is an extremal point, then the gradient is zero? It does not say the opposite. If you find a, a place where the gradient is zero, it doesn't necessarily mean that your, your function is at an extremal point. And that's a really important distinction. But let's see if we can sort this out further. All right, so I'm going to give you an example. We'll just do a simple example here where we have Here's our function. All right, so what I want to do now is see if I can find, let's look uh, for critical points. Where grad f is equal to the zero vector. So let's compute grad f. Let's compute the first derivative. So we have a 2x minus 2, comma, and then we take the y derivative, it's going to be 2y minus 6. All right, so we set that equal to the 0 vector. And we essentially solve for uh, a, b, this, this special point. That's going to be equal to x, y. All right, so of course 2x minus 2 equals 0. That implies, of course, that x is equal to 1. Great. All right, and then we have 2y is minus 6 is equal to 0. That implies then that um, y is going to be equal to 3. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have, this is, this is going to be a critical point on the surface. Um, let's figure out if we can understand what's going on here. So it turns out we can do a little bit of completing the square. We can complete the square here um, and find out that f of x comma y is equal to 4 plus x minus 1 plus quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared. All right. And, and this, we clearly see that this is basically an upward, uh, upward facing uh, paraboloid. Okay, and, and at the point one comma three, this should be a should be a local. That should be a local minima. So the question then, of course, is how can we uh, be sure? Uh, is there some sort of second derivative test? Is there some sort of second derivative test? And the answer, of course, is yes. There is such a thing as a second derivative test. Um, the second derivative test is a little bit challenging. We're going to have to go to another page to write out the thing. Okay, so here's the second derivative test. of critical points for um, z is equal to f of x comma y uh, um, multivariate functions. So how do we figure this one out? Okay, so it turns out, so the, 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 the test, you can even call it a theorem, is that if 
grad F is equal to zero at a point A, B, okay? So this makes it a critical point. Uh, then we would need, need now com then compute uh, the, the, the determinant of the matrix of the second of second derivatives. Okay. At a comma b. So we call this this determinant we're going to call d at a comma b. Okay? And it's going to be equal to that determinant. <laughs> that determinant value, and we put the derivatives like this. This will be f x x, f y y on those diagonals. And then we're going to have f x y and f y x right there. And when we multiply those together, we're going to get f x x. And we're going to evaluate this at a b, f y y evaluated at a b. And then realize that, of course, by Clairaut's theorem, f x y is equal to f y x if um, if there's smoothness if there's smoothness if there's smoothness of the partials so we can write this as f x y comma a b uh, evaluated at a b quantity squared right because both of these are the same right so theorem goes like this. The theorem says, case A, if D is greater than zero, and F X X of A comma B is greater than zero, then we have basically a, a concave up surface, and this is going to be a local minimum. B, if D is greater than zero and F X X A B is less than zero, then we have a local maximum. Finally, if D is less than zero, then F A B is neither. We call this a saddle point. All right, so let's follow up on that example we had before and see if we can use the second derivative test. So we had the following function, x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y plus 14, okay? All right, and we found that the point 1, 3 is a critical point. So let's compute f x x. Well, before we do it, let's just compute all the derivatives again. That's going to be 2x minus 2 fy, that's going to be equal to 2y minus 6. And then fxx is going to be equal to um, 2. fyy is going to be equal to 2 as well. And now finally, the mixed partial derivative, fxy, that in fact is going to be 0 in this particular case because there's no mixed function of x's or y's. Uh, in the first partials. All right, so now my point D, evaluated at A comma B, is going to be FXX, FYY minus FXY quantity squared, which is going to be equal to 4, which is positive. And now we have to look at uh, um, this. We also note that FXX is equal to 2, which is positive. 
in terms of our theorem, this, this applies to case A of the second derivative test. So, so we have a local minimum. Okay, I think we've made a lot of progress here. We've done another example. I want to show now another example here. Let's look at consider that hyperbolic paraboloid. All right, let's see if we can find, let's see if we can find extrema. All right, so we have the grad F is gonna be two X, and then we have a minus two Y, right? That's my, this is FX and that's FY. I set that equal to the zero vector, and I find that X comma Y equal to zero comma zero is a critical point. All right, so let's now see about those second partials. So f x x that's going to be two, f y y that's going to be negative two, and f x y that's going to be zero. So d at zero zero is going to be two times negative two, which is negative four. All right, which is less than zero. So this is case c, which says that there is no no, it's neither a minima or a maxima. Okay, so it's what we call a saddle. All right, so let's just get a, a picture of what this graph looks like. I think I've plotted this many times. So we have x, y, and z here. And we know that the parabola goes up uh, of x squared minus y squared. This is the, the function that we're plotting here. But in the y domain, it goes like that. So again, these are that parabola goes in the y domain. And then here on the line of y equals 0, so on the x-axis, we have it going up, right? So zero, zero, is that a funny spot? It's what I would call a, so they call this a saddle, or what I would call a mountain pass. So again, this is like that Pringle shape that we've seen. So this is what I would call a mountain pass. So um, a mountain pass is, is, of course, neither, it's not a summit, or a valley. Okay, it's of course um, in between. It's a point that you have to climb up to, but there are other things around it that are even higher, All right? But this point is a point where you have a tangent plane that's flat. So, okay, we have neither a minima or a max in this particular case. Uh, what we have is called a saddle or a mountain pass. So we've used the theorem now, this second derivative test, twice and got two different outcomes. Uh, we'll do more example videos uh, or more example problems of minima and maxima in the future. Thank you very much.